Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about multi-level assemblies and how to handle that in tech structures. So here I have a simple skid made up of some beams and then some handrail framing. And this could be a shop assembled unit that's going to be delivered to the site just like this. If we use traditional methods of welding and bolting, what we might end up with is a bill of material that runs clean off the sheet. So that's not really what we want. And also, if we do that, we're not really mimicking how this is going to be fabricated in a shop. The skid itself is probably going to be fabricated first, all the wide flange members, and then the handrails will be fabricated separately before being all joined together. So in Tecla, what we really want to do is mimic those shop processes for one, but also have a cleaner looking drawing uh, on the other side of things. So in order to do that, working with multi-level assemblies, we can simply bolt and weld these together. Not a lot of people know this, but under the bolting properties and under the welding properties, we have the option to connect not just as a secondary part, but as a sub-assembly. So that's one method to do this. Um, there it is under the bolt properties, and here it is under the weld properties. I don't prefer to use this method. Um, I find the right-click menu to have a little bit more control, but there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. If you're using the right click menu, you first have to have the select assemblies button pressed down the way I do here. And then you have to decide how you want this to be displayed on a bill of material. Do you want to have an overall assembly made of three sub assemblies? In that case, what you would want to do is select all three assemblies and then you can right click, go to assembly and make into assembly. So that's the first method. If instead you had an assembly that was made up of a normal, you know, beam with plates and angles and, and other things attached to it, and then add sub-assemblies to that, it would be a slightly different workflow. You would simply grab the sub-assembly, right-click, and go to assembly, and then add as sub-assembly. So this way, what you would see is main part, secondary parts, and then sub-assemblies listed on the BOM. So two different workflows for how you want this to be uh, shown on a drawing. I definitely recommend you go ahead and try both methods so you can see how, how that's actually going to show up. What I'm going to do is the first method. I'm going to bring all three together as one super assembly um, made up of three sub assemblies. So what I'll do here is I'll select those three assemblies and then I'll right click and go to assembly, make into assembly. So now this is all welded together as one assembly, as you can see when I hover over it. If for some reason though, I needed to still access the sub-assemblies inside of this, um, another thing that a lot of people don't know is you can do that by changing your hierarchy or changing your hierarchy selection. Right now down at the bottom of my screen, you can see there's a number zero. This zero is indicating that I am at the highest level um, as far as selection goes. So when I hover over this, I'm getting the overall unit. However, if I hold down the shift key and use my mouse wheel to scroll forward, you can see how that changes to a one and then a two and then a three down on the bottom of my screen. What that's saying is that I'm changing the level of selection. So if I go back down to a one, now I can grab the individual sub assemblies that make up this super assembly. If I hold the shift key and scroll forward one more time and go to a level two, now I can grab the individual parts inside of those sub-assemblies. So by changing your, your selection level using the shift uh, key and scrolling your mouse wheel, you can select things at different levels and this is also going to be very helpful when it comes time to make drawings. So let's go ahead and number this. So I'll go to my drawings and reports and I'll run a quick numbering. If I want to make a drawing of the overall assembly, I can do so simply by selecting the overall assembly and then going to my drawings and creating a drawing of this. In the U.S. Imperial environment, we do have a multi-level drawing example set up for you so that you can see what the bill of material might look like. So what I'll do here is go to my drawing properties. I'm going to set up a multi-level drawing all the way down at the bottom, ML assembly with BOM. So that's my multi-level assembly with BOM. So I'll go ahead and say OK, and then let's make a drawing. So here in my drawing list, 
I have the overall view dimensioned out. Obviously, I could turn on different views and add sections and things like that if I want. But if I scroll in here, you can see that I have um, the overall assembly is simply called beam because I didn't change that from the default. It's made up of one sub-assembly called beam, which is the, the skid down below, and then two rail sub-assemblies, HR2. So you get a very simple bill of material. Obviously, there's a lot of parts on here. So we do need to make separate drawings of those sub-assemblies. If I close out of this, when I want to make a drawing of the sub-assemblies, what I need to do is select them at that different hierarchy level. So I'll hold shift, I'll scroll up one, and now I can go ahead and grab that lower skid and say, make me an assembly drawing. I'll do the same thing for one of those handrails, right click, make me an assembly drawing, and then I'll go back to my drawing list. So in my drawing list now, if I go to the individual beam or the individual skid, now I'm seeing here that I have a beam, it's made up of a W16 by 40, um, that's the main part and that's simply the bill of material style that I'm using, all of the secondary stiffener plates and then all of the other W16 by 40s inside of it. So what you're getting is a more traditional Tecla BOM style. Um, this is using style 1, obviously style 2, 3, 4, and 5 are going to look a little bit different than this. If I go ahead and look at the handrail drawing, might have to increase the drawing size. Yeah, it looks like this one doesn't fit. So I'll go ahead and I'll bump this up to be a 24 by 36. There we go. And we can see that the bill of material lists out all of the individual parts inside of that handrail. So these are special bill of materials that look at that hierarchy level just like you can with the selection so that it's only listing out the sub-assembly parts. So this is just a really brief primer on using multi-level assemblies. I hope you find this helpful. Um, one thing about the naming, the naming is now based on the assembly level. So if I go back and double click on this as an assembly, you can see that there is an assembly name. Um, if I go to the next level and double click on just that skid section, it also has its own assembly name. So that's how you could change that before you get to that drawing phase if that's an issue for you. As always, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to your local help desk, and thanks for watching.